welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-36. Last time we were with our associates, they had escaped Phoenix and were hidden away on the Venture, a ship at the dock. The plan was to go ahead and be dropped off near the causeway and proceed into the frontier to begin their careers as adventurers. Bulger, a squat gnome, had been given the job of ferrying the group to the shore in a longboat. As the group beached the small craft on the shore, it was discovered that the venture was carrying a rather strange collective of explosive material. A few moments later, the ship exploded into the straits. Bulger, Cabe, and Sister Elaine went to search for survivors, but found none. We rejoin the group as they make their way across the rugged tundra towards the town of Colby. Fargus Stoutheart turned around from the lead position and glared at the sailor Bulger. With the line stopping, the gnome looked up at the large man and asked him what the problem was. The ranger explained that he needed to secure his weapon, pointing at the sailor's cutlass. Inquiring as to the problem, Bulger was informed that the constant slapping noise was bound to attract something. Fargus tossed him a leather strap and suggested tying it down. The group started forward as Bulger knelt down in the high grass to secure his weapon, grumbling the entire time. Once he had fastened the blade more securely, he looked up to see a group headed into a copse of heavy foliage, but then he caught a glimpse of movement on both sides. Initially stunned, Bulger watched in horror as several large dog-faced humanoids encroached on both flanks of the party. He quickly snapped out of his surprise and yelled out, TRAP! and charged forward. The gnome ran as fast as his squat legs could carry him and his yelling was noticed by both the party and the group of gnolls closing in on them. Cabe and Sister Irena were in position to spot the group closing in with each yelling that they had problems on their opposing sides. Everyone quickly readied their weapons with Lady Irena murmuring a spell. The gnolls lurched forward against the party with their surprise broken. With a count of one to one of Knowles versus party members, Bulger wheezed ahead but was clipped from the side by a larger knoll with spit dripping from its fangs. The pair tumbled to the side as the sounds of battle and magical flaming arrows rang out. As the battle raged for several moments, it was the mage that took down her opponent first and allowed her to move against the knoll facing off with Karina in her new armor. Cabe, Fargus, and Sister Elaine had each suffered minor wounds while returning the favor against their own opponents. Bulger immediately jumped to his feet and was quite spry for an overweight gnome. He attempted to pull his blade out but found his wrapping skills had secured the weapon too well to his leg. As the knoll leader began to rise, the sailor executed a leaping kick to the creature's throat, knocking it backwards into a fractured tree. The gnome rolled and jumped to his feet, putting up both fists but suddenly stopped. Looking down, he discovered that his kick had sent the knoll into the broken limb that pierced the back of the creature's head and ended up through its mouth, killing it instantly. In the middle of the fray, Fargus had landed several blows and his opponent was near death. Seeing the cleric struggling, he skipped the killing blow and slashed at Elaine's opponent. His aim was true and struck the blade out of the creature's hand as the cleric split its skull with her mace. The delay was costly as Fargus took another strike from his opponent, opening a large gash on his arm. The next strike finished off his opponent. A silence fell over the group, each looked around for additional opponents, but found none. Bulger walked into the thicket, with the others grinning at his handiwork, quipping, those things aren't so tough. Lady Arena looked around nervously and began to call out for the waif. Karina! Karina! she yelled out but received no answer. Cave happened upon the body of a dead knoll and discovered the novice below the body covered in blood. Over here! Over here! She needs healing! exclaimed the bard. 
Tossing aside the dead knoll, he overlooked Fargus's spare dagger buried into its chest. Below, the creature laid a pale-looking Carina with her eyes shut. As the others quickly gathered around her, the young woman's eyes snapped open, shocking everyone and causing Cave to stumble backwards into Fargus. Karina sat bolt upright and began to look around as Sister Elaine examined the pooling blood on her armor. The group took several minutes to get her calmed down, and Sister Elaine noted that the blood wasn't Karina's and she was fine. The young rogue stammered and stuttered, and it quickly became obvious to all that she had never killed anything before. Cave and Fargus took up vantage points to make sure there were no additional foes as the sailor, cleric, and mage soothed Karina's shocked mentality. Fargus returned after looting the gnoll's bodies and retrieved the dagger Karina had used to kill the creature. He presented her with the item as well as a short sword and scabbard from the gnoll leader that Bulger had killed. Slowly recovering, Karina thanked everyone for their concern but stated she was okay. The others knew better, and each mentioned that the first time was always the most difficult. Vargas lifted her to her feet and used some of the water to wash away the blood from her armor. Roughly patting her on the back, he congratulated her on being unscathed. Hell, my first fight, I nearly had a finger ripped off. You aren't even hurt. That makes you better than me. Karina smiled weakly and looked at the messy armor trying to wipe away the blood that, but her hand was steadied by the small gnome. Leave it, lassie. It's a badge of honor. Besides, we don't have time to be pretty. We should probably keep going. Looking at the others and receiving nods of approval, he bowed to Fargus and waved his hand forward. The ranger nodded to the gnome in gratitude, who nodded back. The group trudged forward and continued to trek while they still had daylight with them. The sailor loosened the bonds on his blade. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.